what's up? This is Rachel Leah. You're sitting down. Come home with me. I'm with legendary pioneer Five Dog. How you doing? I'm all right. How are you? I'm so happy to be here and talk to you. Um, I want to get into a, a bunch of questions about sports, about music, about everything. What did you think of um, Alan Iverson's return and them offering you to go to the show? Can't offer that man nothing he is as a shooter. You can't. I mean, the thing. I think the thing that ended Allen's career unceremoniously was the fact that he refused to come off of anybody's bench, which I think he should have came off the bench after a while, you know, because you know it's LeBron's turn, it's whoever else's turn. You know what I mean? Um, Eagle Dollar was on the scene at the time and things like that, so he should have he should have decided to come off the bench because guess what? I guarantee you he would easily pick six men in the Allen Iverson could give you 15 points in five minutes. Yeah. That's just the type of heart, skill, and will he had to succeed. You know what I mean? So I think he would have been helpful his second tenure with the Sixers. As far as George Carl trading him from here, Denver, to Detroit, I think that, that that's what really killed his career because there's no way he could go to Detroit and play in the same backcourt with Rick Hamilton because they're both shooting him. We both like to score the ball. You know, he was a shooting guard in the playoffs back all those years with the Philadelphia and the Larry Brown and the Griffin team. And things of that nature, like the Knicks are doing with Carl. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, you can't ask that man to go to no deep. That's AI. Yeah, I thought, I thought it had a lot of racial undertones. You know, like, Iverson is notorious for being really a big not wanting to right. change where he right. was coming from. Right. And the NBA had a big problem with that. Well, they knew, they knew he wasn't going to do it. And that's why they even brought it up because I don't think they even wanted, wanted to be bothered with his so-called disposition or what have you. But we talking about rap. <laughs> I was going to say my next question. What's your best rendition of a practice man? Practice? Not the game. Not the game. <laughs> Not the game that I work hard, so hard for in love. Not the game. We talking about practice, man. Practice. <laughs> That's my boy. Right? Wait, wait. I wish he was still playing. Really me too, cool. me too. You know, the 10-year anniversary of that practice man just hit last year, I think. Wow, 10 years. Yeah, wow. it's crazy, right? What was the significance with making the Easy Store a track of a slash? What was the significance? Mm -hmm. I mean, it was in New York. So, <coughs> I think that's what sold everybody on it. And you know, Kanye and Kim, they have a relationship, a kinship, friendship. You know, whatever being, you know, cute and associated with good music and maybe solely Def Jam right now, you know what I mean? But he and Kanye are pretty cool like that. So, you know, I think that's, it had more to do with that than anything else. But, you know, if the shows were elsewhere, who knows if he would have been there. But it was home, Barclays Center and Madison Square Garden, you know what I mean? So, and one of them, one of the shows, the first show was on my birthday. So. Wow. It, it, was, it was cool. It was cool. Yeah, it was, that sounds amazing. You know, we had to go back home and do the last two shows. Mm -hmm. So, experiencing both like the group mm -hmm. and solo dynamic, what are like some of the pros and cons? I mean, you have the luxury of having Ali Shahid behind you, Jerobi on my left, Q-tip on my right, or I'm going Q-tip left or right. Same thing with Jerobi. You know, they're there. It's like without rehearsal, without practice, you know. Um, Ray John Rondo's gonna find KG without looking. You know, Paul Pierce back in the day, back in the hallway championship. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's just how the vibe was with us. You know, and there's no look passes. You knew where you were supposed to be. I, matter of fact, I got this from Ali in the documentary. He said the same exact thing, but yeah. he was exactly dead on. You know what I mean? As far as the solo is, so you made your bed, you gotta line it, you gotta make sure it's neat and ready. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, it's a little tougher, especially in the world of hip hop where it's so fickle. You know what I mean? You, your debut, not your debut, but your album in general could come out on a Tuesday and be number one for like two weeks and then TI's coming out. He's hitting that number one spot. Lula, DMX, Buster. So you gotta be on point, it's very competitive, right. but at the same time, it seems like the fans of hip-hop, you know, they have a, a attention deficiency. Mm -hmm. 
You know what, what I'm saying? Do you mean by that? Because, you know, they can rock with you for a minute and then forget about you that quick as well. You know what I mean? And that's just how that's just how hip hop is. You know what I mean? So if you're one of those artists like Eminem, Jay Z and Lil Wayne that can stay at the top for a good eight weeks, maybe twelve, maybe sixteen, maybe even further, then more power to you. Love is love. But it doesn't happen that often. Right. I mean when you really look at it, there's only a few people selling a great abundance of records right. in the hip hop industry. Like right? that music is just yeah, yeah, fun. It's very different. Mm -hmm. Touring is where there's a lot more money. Exactly. Now. So nowadays, you know, back in the days, you're like, yeah, you want to win a Grammy, you want to do this, you want to do that. You want to keep it real for the streets, you want to sell a lot of mixtapes, you want to sell a lot of albums and so forth. Nowadays, it's about either put your mixtape out, put your album out, hit that road. Right. And the fans want to yeah. see you, just get that money that way. Yeah, I mean, that's the best thing you can do at this point. So you know, Beyonce and Jay Z ain't stupid. Yeah. Even though they are selling records, yeah. they they're getting the best of both worlds. Right, right. You know what I mean? That's our girls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so does a tribe called Quest have any plans for the twenty-fifth anniversary of their debut? Um, we're supposed to. We've been talking about it, but we haven't gone into deep, deep detail about it yet. But I'm sure something will be in the works. But it won't be a new album. I know that. It'll probably be. Remixes, re releases, mm -hmm. not another documentary for sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so, um, yeah. you know, it's we'll, we'll, we'll celebrate it one way or the other. That's good to hear. So, I know two of your favorite MCs are Nas and Ghostface. So, um, Illmatic or Stillmatic? And Supreme mm. Clientele or Fishgale? And why? <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> Because you picked the four. <laughs> Have you been on my Instagram or something? <laughs> I do my research. Okay. Um, <laughs> Illmatic. Illmatic. Classic. It's, it's not only one of his great albums, but it's one of the great albums ever. He does it in hip hop. <laughs> you know, he changed the game with that one. He he became pretty much standard. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like. Not to sweat another brother, you know what I mean? Because I am hip hop and right. I do have an ego. Yeah, yeah. But, yo, the dude, when he put that out, it was like, I've, I've always wanted to interview him just like this and be like, yo, what the F was you thinking? <laughs> I think we all would have asked that. Okay? In your book of rhymes, all your words, that's the margin, really. Um, when you was 12, you went to hell for stuff with Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. young girl, gosh. Um, even though on it's still Medic, I love that album, you know, Second Childhood is one of my favorite records. Last Real, N Word Alive, Lord of Mercy, Jesus, just to look the world, it's like, okay, what are you doing, like, You know what I mean? So that that's what I get when I listen to like Nas. I mean, KRS is my all time right, favorite right. favorite. But ever since Nas put Illmatic out, he's been my favorite. Ever since Kobe Bryant and Allen Iverson came into the league along with Melo, LeBron, Kevin Durant. They've been my favorite. Chris Paul, you know what I mean? But um, your Nas is that dude. So I gotta say, Illmatic is like I said, it was one of the better albums ever made, anyway, in general. And then as far as Ghost, he's just in a world of his own. He's just in a class by himself. Like you don't have to understand what he's saying, but you still enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? Like his swag. He talk at the side of his mouth. Yeah. yeah. And yo, wherever she goes, she can be Mrs. Cole. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he's just dope. Yeah. Um, but um, you said Supreme Clientele and Fish Scale. Yeah. I love both, but I gotta go with Supreme Clientele. Okay. You know what I mean? I, and I really, really love Fish Scale. That was a great album. Yeah, I did too. But, and Bullet, the, the, did you ever hear the Bullet, the original Bulletproof Ballads? Because you know he had a lot of sample sample claims issues mm. right before it came out, so he had to finagle and change a couple of things. You gotta hear the original. There's a little story for the girls and boys. <laughs> oh, man, you should see it, Joe. That album was crazy, the original. But um, and then he had another album that was like, oh, okay, the Kids Club. Matter of fact, so mm -hmm. yeah, he always yeah, he's he always coming with it. Yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> he's always coming with it. But Supreme Clientel, I like. I think um, my favorite song on that was um, 
Child's Play. Okay. That was dope. But my favorite, one of my favorite records from him is Yolanda's House from um, the big dough he had. Mm -hmm. I like that record a lot, and I like Kilo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love Kilo. Why don't you get the money and get the pennies, man? <laughs> like, yeah. That is a great record. Yeah, so, he's dope. So who's a new MC that's really gotten your respect? Well, Pusha T's not new. He's been doing it for a minute. But like, Solo, he's fairly new. Yeah. Well, yes, as a solo, yeah. yes, but he's the truth. He's brought. I like him a lot. <laughs> yeah. I really, really do. Always did, yeah. but I like him as a solo as just as much as with his brother with the clips. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, Kendrick Lamar, I mean, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's like you can say, he, he's doing his thing. I like Joey Badass, CJ Fly a lot. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because at New York. You know. Oh, Joey? Yeah. I mean, well, that's, yeah, that's where he's from. So. Yeah. Yeah, he got, well, not only does he have New York, but he has the Golden Era feel mm, too. Yes. Mm -hmm. He has like a most deaf, CL smooth, Q-tip. Mm. Not, not that he sounds like them, but that era, he just has that aura. Yeah, you can hear his influence. You know what I mean? That skill set. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. So there's this line in the Beats Rhymes and like documentary where you say, um, I hit tip to the beginning. I was wondering if you could break that down for me. What is that? Yeah, mean? well, hip-hop really came into, you know, Cool Herc really kicked the doors in for hip-hop, mm -hmm. you know, back, you know, 79. Mm -hmm. Q-Tip and I were in fourth grade. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, you know, I was into it really, really hard. And, you know, we used to say everybody else's raps, like, Funky Four Plus One More and Curtis Blow, these are the breaks. Like Biggie and the Notorious D's are the breaks. Biggie don't break up, but he's teaching me We used to sing that song all the time. And other people saw on Sugar Hill, obviously. And then after a while, we started to make our own words up just being silly. You know what I'm saying? And um, I said to him, Yo, B, you should run. To I'm gonna, yeah, you should rhyme. I'm gonna rhyme. So we were like best friends, mm -hmm. you know, from like two years old right. to like at least 15, 16. You know, once you get older, you get other friends. You're right, still right. cool. Yeah, we're like brothers. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I'm like, yo, you should rhyme, baby. We should do this together, like whatever. I didn't think we were gonna come out with a group. We just wanted to be celebs in the hood. <laughs> but being that we're from the same area as LL. Run DMC, Ja Rule eventually, um, and others, of course. Um, we was like, yo, it was it wasn't about, and I said this in the documentary. It wasn't about. We wasn't thinking about having our own cadences, patterns, right. our own flows. We just wanted to be running run deep. Mm -hmm. So it's like me and Tip would go back and forth. You know how running the running the DMC. Well, it's about that time. To say that we're what? You to the <laughs> then you had to the pad, Adidas, no shoelaces. You know, we wanted to be there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we made up a rap. We made up our own, like J M J, all the letters of his name. So it's like A L I, all the letters of his name, cutting and scratches all the aspects of his game. So check out Shahid as he cuts the chairs and look at us with the mics in our hand. Then take the count. One, two, three, one, two, three. He's six foot one and I'm five foot three. Oh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, we, yeah. we really wanted to be them, you know what right, I mean? But right. after a while, well, you know, they went to the same high school with the Jungle Brothers. Ali and Q took that age. They met in the high school, went to the same high school with the Jungle Brothers, Africa, and Mike G. Wow. Mike G's uncle was ready to learn to make a song. Long, long story short. And that's how everything came together, just being in the right place at the right time. But um, breaking down what I said as far as I introduced him to the game, I introduced him to the paper, I introduced him to the world of hip hop. He met them in high school, and eventually he was able, I mean, what better education can you get other than getting it from the You know what I'm saying? And so he used to come back home and give me that same education, and you know what I mean? So. He introduced me to the paper. All right, let's get paid for this. That's dope. You know what I'm saying? I love 
best story because I feel like it reflects the journey of a child. It's just being so organic.